Hello, I'm Terry White, Worldwide Designer and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe, and it's my pleasure to take you through what's new in Adobe InDesign for the Adobe Max 2020 release. Uh, there's a couple of features in here I'm really loving, but let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to start with the feature I love the most. This is one I saw a few years back when they were just working on it, and I'm so happy to have this feature in here now. Uh, first of all, I'm just looking at a spread I put together just from one of our uh, template files, and I replaced the cover with a solid image of a football player. So this is not cut out. This is actually an image here. I'll move it around so you guys can see it. This is actually an image with a black background. So you can, you know, I'll move it around a couple times so you can really see that that's, this is a real image. So let's undo, let's undo, let's put it back. And what I want, and this, we've had text wrap for a while now, but text wrap always worked around the object. So in other words, it would work around the entire bounding box, or if I were to go into Photoshop and make a, a outline around the football player, then I could use that. I could use a mask, I could use um, a pen tool or anything like that, but I would have to manually go do all that. Well, now for the first time, I'm gonna bring up text wrap. Let's see, I've got it over here on the side. Let's bring up that panel. And um, the options have not changed at the top. So I'm gonna say, wrap it around the object shape. Now in this case, the text is probably just going to completely disappear because I'm telling it to wrap around the entire photo. But what's new is if we go down to the contour options down here at the bottom, I now have a new option, just like in Photoshop, select subject. In other words, use Adobe Sensei to figure out what the subject of the photo is and wrap around the subject, regardless of the subject's background. So when I choose that, I get this beautiful shape and mask around my subject. And yes, you can ver still vary the amount of space uh, from the overall wrap uh, around your subject until you get it just the way you want it to look. But this is freaking amazing to be able to do that in one click and have it automatically wrap the text around the shape of the subject in your photos from here on out, it's just going to make some very interesting layout options that you now have uh, that take a fraction of the time instead of having to go into Photoshop and mask it all out yourself. So there it is, the finished mask uh, or using the uh, text wrap using select subject. All right. Now, while we're on this same image, let's say that I, I go ahead and save this and I want to now send this over to my client or send this over to my art director and have them review it. Well, we introduced uh, in the past, we had a, a review client uh, or a review with your client feature, and that feature has been enhanced in this version. So let's switch over to my review workspace so that I have all my review tabs and ready to go. It's also suggesting that I switch out of preview mode so I can get to all, so I can see basically the marks as they come in. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create a review. Now, normally you as the designer would create your review you could name your review whatever you want. So I can name it American Football or whatever I want to call it. Create. And that will give you some options. When you create it, you have the option to do an invite only, meaning I'm going to pick some people that I want to be able to review this and only those people will get it, so forth and so on. Or I could just say, you know what? Uh, anyone that they share this link to can give, give me feedback on it. I don't care. So invite only or public. Even if you make it public, you still have the option to require a password, which I'm not going to do. And that will generate a unique link for this particular review. So I can go ahead and copy that link, email it, text message it, however I want to get it out to the people that I want to review this. Now, I've copied it to my clipboard, and since I'm just working solo here, I'm going to pretend I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a reviewer. So I'm going to switch over to my web browser, and I'm just, even for the sake of making sure I'm not signed in, I'm going to create an incognito window, which means that it's not logged in anything, it's, there's no cookies, there's no anything. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that link in for the review. So it takes me to the review as if I'm just Joe Smith, Joe Blow, guy who doesn't know anything about Creative Cloud, and it lets me go in and, first of all, scroll the document, see everything that's there, and I can go in now and I can start to start to do the review. So, for example, I can zoom in a little bit. Um, we can go ahead and just, uh, oh, 
I don't want to pan, but I do want to scroll over a bit. There we go. Scroll this over a little bit, and let's go ahead and start our review. Now, what's new is that we've had this before, but your, your reviewing tools were limited. Now they are not nearly as limited as they were pre, prior to this release. So first and foremost, we had the pen where you could go in and you could just like put a pen down and put a put a comment next to it and say, um, you know, for example, maybe we just want maybe you, you type it out. Maybe we just want to say football instead of American football. Uh, but the whole article is about American football, so most likely that comment won't go. Now when I hit submit. As a just, you know, incognito user that's not logged in, I'm going to get this thing saying, hey, do you want to log in with your Adobe ID? And I'm like, I don't know what an Adobe ID is. So let's say the user doesn't have one, doesn't want, doesn't want to create one. They can still just log in with their name. So they don't have to be um, a Creative Cloud customer by any means, and they don't even have to have an Adobe ID. So I'm just going to say that my name is one of my favorite characters in the TV shows, Jack Bauer. All right, so I'm Jack Bauer today. And I've now submitted my comment as Jack Bauer, the guest. All right, so now that again, we had this before, you could do a pin, but now we got some more options. So, the next option is highlight. So, um, I'm, I'm just going to highlight this and say, uh, here, we'll just highlight this text. Did I click the highlight? Yep, I right, hope. Oh. Highlight tool, there we go. And we'll go ahead and uh, highlight this text. There we go. And now that my highlight's there, I'm going to say that. Um, should football be capitalized? All right, and that's kind of just me asking a question. And I submit, so I just keep going through this process, submitting all my comments. Now we have two more uh, new ones, strike through and replace text. They kind of do the same thing. Strike through means I'm gonna highlight something to be removed. Strike or replace text means I'm gonna do the same kind of look, but I'm gonna give you the text to replace it with. So for example, if I kind of find something here, I'm going to pick the replace text. And let's say that I'm going to replace uh, advance down the field by running with the ball. Um, I'm going to say uh, maybe replace this with running fast <laughs> with the ball. All right, so there we go. I'm just telling the person what text I want to put in there. And the same thing, strike through means just simply re remove the text. Last but not least, we do also have the drawing option. So I could say, well, there's no text to highlight or, or talk about. So I'm just going to draw attention to a particular uh, part of the image. I'm going to say here, um, <clears throat> add the team's logo to the helmet. So there we go. So now I submit all my changes, I scroll through, go through all my spreads, make all my uh, submissions. But what's been happening in real time in InDesign, if I switch back to InDesign now, is that that review has actually been happening. I've been getting all that feedback from everyone that's been reviewing this document in real time. So I get to see every comment, who made it as the, as the designer, and I can go ahead and either um, make their changes, reply to them why I'm not going to make their change. And if I make their change, uh, then I can also mark their change as resolved. Meaning, yep, I did that, that's resolved, and that mark goes away for me because I took care of it. Uh, so if I can make all the changes and I can resubmit, or, or I don't even have to resubmit the review. If the person refreshes their browser, they would see the changes that I made. So if I go here, and I uh, go in my tool here and I say that, oh yeah, you're right, that should be a capital F, whether it should be or not. <laughs> I could go ahead and say that, yes, this has been resolved. And then if the person refreshes their browser, they would see the updated football has been resolved and that the mark has, has gone away now. So um, it's great to be able to work back and forth, not only with just you and maybe one other person, but it could be a whole review you know, committee that's reviewing the document, everyone gets the link, everyone gets to go make their comments in the browser, everyone gets to see who said what about what, and you as the InDesign person gets to make all the changes. So that's the new uh, comment and review features in uh, this release at Adobe Max. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to one that's near and dear to my heart and it's working with color. 
So we got some new color options for the first time in a long time here in InDesign. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to switch out of my review workspace and go to, uh, we can go to any one of these, advanced color, uh, go back to typography, which is where I started. And uh, what we now have the ability to do, of course, you work with color all the time. You color objects, you color text. You can even colorize black and white photos. You can put screens. You can do all kinds of things with color in InDesign. That's what makes InDesign so great when it comes to color. So in this case, if I were working with uh, this, particular, in, this particular color as a swatch, and I wanted to change the color throughout the document, I could change the swatch, but then I'm losing that swatch, meaning I'm making a change to it. Or I could duplicate the swatch and make a copy, and that way I get to keep the color, but still go back and make changes. Well, all of that goes away today, all that headache, because now all you have to do is right-click, and choose find this color and what find this color will do is first of all just go through your document finding everywhere you've used that color whether you've used it in a swatch or a style or anything else for that matter but more importantly you can simply say replace it with this color so you can replace one color with another color and you can even create a new swatch on the fly if you needed to and you can even tint it so replace it with this blue but only at 80 percent tint once you've done that, you can choose the search um, search criteria, the whole document, all the frames, so forth and so on. Find them one by one, but in this case, I know I want everywhere that color's been used to simply change it to the blue, done. Just like that, and it changed it 10 times throughout the entire document. So, just that easily, I was able to go and change that color everywhere it was used. And you can imagine, this is just a few pages. What if it was a thousand pages? What if it was, you know, 2,000 pages? You've used that color throughout and you've used it all over the place on different things. Maybe you used a swatch, maybe you didn't, but now it's done. All right, speaking of color, let's go to our color panel and let's double click on that color. And we are for the first time introducing a new color space to InDesign. We've had RGB, CMYK, and Lab pretty much since the beginning. But now we're introducing HSB for the first time in InDesign. You might be thinking, well, why do I need HSB? I'm only using CMYK. I'm only using RGB. Why do I even need this? Well, I didn't really understand the importance of it either until I started working in photography. What HSB stands for is hue, saturation, and brightness. So while you could go around the color spectrum in RGB and pick different colors, what hue, saturation, and brightness does is it really lets you dial in very specific colors. So for example, if I switch to that mode, it takes me to the hue slider, and I can pick any color in the spectrum just like I always do. So let's say I want to change this color to more of a purple color. Great, I find kind of the range of purple that I want, but then that's just the hue. I also have saturation of that color and the brightness of that color. So if I go to saturation, I get to choose how much of that purple is being used. So none of it or all of it, like a really rich, deep purple or anything in between. So that's cool. And then how bright or dark is it? Do I want a darker shade of that purple or a lighter shade of that purple? So hue, saturation, and brightness just gives you more control, another way of controlling your colors here in InDesign. And uh, those are just a few of my favorite features here in Adobe InDesign for the Max 2020 release. Check it out, find more, use more, do more with InDesign uh, here in the Max 2020 release. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.